Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Nifty Numbers Family Math Night, and in this video, I want to share with you how to use rectangular arrays to teach students their multiplication facts, factors, prime numbers, composite numbers, square numbers, and I'm going to do that using inch graph paper, stickers, tiles, rubber stamps, and dice. Now, the PDF version of this lesson can be found on our website at www.familymathnight.com under the Math Resources section. Okay, now in second grade, students are beginning to learn their beginning multiplication facts. And the best way to do this is visually um, through having them manipulate and create those facts. And we're gonna use tiles to do that. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is to, we're gonna start with the number four, is to ask students, okay, can you use these four tiles and create a rectangle? And so, one of the ways that they would do that would be like this, and you're gonna tie in some great geometry vocabulary here to talk about um, what makes that a rectangle, so what are the properties of a rectangle? And then another way that they um, will come up with is like that, and you can sneak in some more geometry vocabulary because of that, is congruent to that. They're exactly the same. But yes, indeed, that is another way to do it. And then I'll come up with this one, which is a square, which is a special rectangle. And then they may try something like that, but that doesn't fit the definition of rectangle, and neither does that. So eventually they'll discover that there were three rectangles that they could create um, using four tiles and now you're going to introduce them to some more vocabulary. You're going to say, okay, this is a rectangular array and we're going to describe this way, array um, by calling the tiles that go in this direction rows and the tiles that go in this direction columns. So this would be one row and four columns and we always say rows first so this would be one by four, okay, and that would give us a total of Four, um, four tiles. In fact, you can even have students record those, okay, rows, columns, and area, and I limited myself right here to the three that we just created, but you can have them add on to that using different numbers. And then you talk about the patterns, and eventually they're gonna see that one times four equals four, and two times two equals four, and so forth, and now they've, um, they've created, um, they've actually visually created these um, multiplication facts. Okay, so once they know how to do this, you're now going to use that graph paper and stickers and rubber stamps, and they're going to transfer that onto the graph paper. Now, I'm using the number eight as my illustration here, okay? But with the number eight, I have created this rectangle here. It's two rows and four columns, one, two, three, four, and I've done it down here, the same thing down here, just to show you um, that in um, using rubber stamps. And then they're going to cut this out and you can either have um, the numbers represented up on a bulletin board so they would then cut this out and they would put this under the number eight or you could have students actually create their own um, uh, sheet like this where you can see here that I've created all the different um, rectangles for uh, the number eight and then you're going to introduce them to the word factors okay the numbers that you multiply together okay, um, uh, to, to get the answer um, are called factors, and then the answer is called the product, so then they would list the factors of eight on there, okay. Um, another way to do that is uh, this third grade classroom created a multiplication uh, book, so they created um, their arrays using rubber stamps, and then you can see down here that they have put their uh, the corresponding uh, multiplication fact on there. They gathered them all together and created the really uh, great um, classroom multiplication fact book. So that was really fun. Okay, so um, another way that you can have students create um, their rectangles is to use dice. So that they would roll the dice together, and then let's say they they rolled a what have I got here a four and a two. So you could have all the and now you need to have two different colored dice to do this because the green ones represent the rows, and the white ones would represent the columns. So they would create a what's about four by two, okay, um, and then uh, they roll the dice again. That just adds a little element of fun, which they they really like. And at a higher level, um, when they're learning, you know, in third grade and, and higher when they're um, learning. Uh, um, their, all of their facts, you can actually put little stickers 
on a die. See that? I've got seven there and nine and ten and so forth. And then um, they're creating, obviously, uh, larger arrays. So, okay, so now in um, fourth and fifth grade, we're going to take it up a level and we're going to introduce them to some more vocabulary. Now, for the purpose of this activity, remember back here where we talked about um, the, the rectangles being congruent? Okay, I'm going to pull this one off right here. So you can see that this rectangle is congruent to this rectangle, even though that's a two by four and that's a four by two. And by the way, um, you can introduce, you can talk to kids about that. That happens to represent the commutative property of multiplication, which states that the order that the factors are um, multiplied does not matter. So you can see a two and a four and a four and a two, and you're still going to end up with a, so great way to tie that, um, the commutative property of multiplication in there. Okay, but for the purpose of the activity that we're going to do in fourth and fifth grade, we're going to count this as one rectangle. You're going to see why that's important in just a minute. So I actually have my fourth and fifth graders create all of these um, because it's fun. They really like to do it. And you can actually have them work in uh, teams. I like to do that. And you can assign them different numbers to work with. You know, okay, you two work on these numbers and you two work on those numbers and so forth. And they're going to create something that looks like this. Now I've used the word, the numbers two through ten, very simple um, numbers so I could get as many as I could on here um, to illustrate this. Um, but it is a great illustration of all the different rectangular arrays that you can make um, using, you know, with a certain number of tiles. And again, you see now why I only wanted them represented one way. Well, actually, you may not see that yet, but we're going to get, we are going to get to that in just a second. So they're only represented one way here. So when you have all of these gathered, of course, in math, we always like to have kids look for patterns. And uh, kids are very creative. So one of the first things they're going to come up with is they're going to notice the patterns and the way maybe somebody put the stickers on or the colors. Um, are represented and so forth. But eventually, someone is going to talk about the fact that some of these numbers only have one rectangular array associated with them. And that means that they have exactly two factors. So all the ones where there's just one array, there's just um, two factors. And that's really exciting. In fact, mathematicians find that really exciting too. It's so exciting that they actually called those numbers, gave those those numbers a certain name, then you can ask students, does anyone know what we call those numbers? And if not, of course, you're going to volunteer that they're called prime numbers. So a prime number is a number that has exactly two factors. And very visually here, students can see that can be made one way. So if we call those prime numbers, does anyone know what we call all the other numbers? And then you would introduce them to composite numbers. And then they can go back and they can label all of their prime numbers and all of their composite numbers, okay, just like that. And I got another prime number on here. Okay. What we haven't talked about so far, somebody may notice that this rectangle here is a square, special kind of rectangle, and we've got another one here. In fact, um, we call those numbers square numbers. Um, and if they don't notice this, you may want to bring this up. Notice how um, the two square numbers that we have represented here have exactly three factors. Hmm, you can pose this question to them. I wonder, do all square numbers have exactly three factors? I don't know. And then you can let them research that and see what they come up with and then present that back to the class. Okay. So you can see that the simple activity, second grade through fifth grade, the simple activity of using tiles to create these arrays really allows for some great discussion, not only on geometry, um, but, um, but numbers uh, as well, um, in number theory, prime numbers and composite numbers and square numbers. Um, and so, uh, so, um, so there's a lot going on with these simple tiles. So have fun.